Welcome back to Dan's On Fandoms. I'm Dan. The new Disney Plus series, Gallery, Star Wars The Mandalorian, provides Star Wars fans with commentary and anecdotes from the actors, creators, and minds behind the awesome live-action series, The Mandalorian. The series gives insight into the work, thought, and dedication that went into creating The Mandalorian. I'd highly recommend checking it out. In the most recent episode, titled Legacy, the topics discussed delved into the impact and genius of George Lucas on filmmaking and, obviously, Star Wars. During the episode, Dave Filoni, who's had a large role in the creation and development of The Clone Wars, Rebels, Resistance, and The Mandalorian, had some very interesting commentary on why Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi's duel with Darth Maul in Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, was so important in Star Wars galactic history. History. Because of this duel, Qui-Gon wound up dying, Obi-Wan became a Jedi Knight and would take on Anakin Skywalker as his apprentice, and Darth Maul was left cast aside as Darth Sidious's apprentice, all of which had very big and very real implications on Anakin's upbringing and his eventual descent into the dark side and transformation into Darth Vader. Filoni points out that so much wrote on this duel because Qui-Gon understood that he would need to be the father figure that Anakin would need. And Anakin had been taken away from his mother after a strong bond had developed between the two, and Qui-Gon understood how that would affect Anakin in a multitude of ways. Unlike the rest of the Jedi Council, Qui-Gon understood that Jedi are supposed to care and love others, and that it wasn't wrong to do so. This notion was very much in opposition to the members of the Jedi Council at that time, one of the reasons as to why Qui-Gon was not a member of the Jedi Council. The prequel films and the Clone Wars animated series showed how detached, politically focused, and flawed the Jedi had become. They had lost their way, and Qui-Gon had understood that. This is all to say that since Qui-Gon believed Anakin was the Chosen One, who would go on to train this young boy would be of the utmost importance. Qui-Gon understood that Anakin would need a loving and caring individual to help train and mold him, not someone who was rigidly dogmatic in their view of the Force and what it meant to be a Jedi. As much as I love Obi-Wan, his understanding and views of the Force were drastically different from that of Qui-Gon's, and the novel Master and Apprentice by Claudia Gray does an excellent job of showcasing that. Filoni points out that initially, Obi-Wan trained Anakin merely because of the promise that he made to a dying Qui-Gon, not because he actually cared about Anakin. Using the example that Obi-Wan had referred to Anakin as another useless life form when Qui-Gon found Anakin on Tatooine, demonstrating how Obi-Wan had a mindset that mirrored that of the Jedi and its council members at that time, which is to say that their focus had drifted from caring about others and for the well-being of the everyday citizens of the Republic to caring more about politics and the reputation of the Jedi Order. The death of Qui-Gon at the hands of Darth Maul meant that the one Jedi that was best suited to train, nurture, and be a father figure to Anakin was killed. Therefore, Anakin was left to train with Obi-Wan who had adopted many of the rigid ideals of his contemporary Jedi and would become more like a brother to Anakin rather than a father figure Anakin would need. Additionally, Anakin's mother Shmi would eventually die during Attack of the Clones, making Anakin feel as if he'd failed on his promise to come back and save her. Essentially, after Qui-Gon found Anakin on Tatooine, he was robbed of his mother and then a potential father figure. Dave Filoni also went on to point out that Luke's love for his father Anakin and Anakin's love for Luke was ultimately what resulted in Anakin's return to the light side in Return of the Jedi, not Luke's powers in the Force, a notion that further cements how wrong the Jedi of the Clone Wars era were in their ideals and beliefs of the Force and being a Jedi. Having attachments and loving others others is not inherently wrong, just as Qui-Gon believed, showcasing that once Qui-Gon had died and Anakin would be trained by Obi-Wan, Anakin's fate had essentially been sealed. Because of how Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon's duel with Darth Maul ended, Anakin would be destined to fall to the dark side and become a pawn of Darth Sidious. This is why the duel of the fates was so important, because the fate of the Chosen One was set in stone the moment Darth Maul killed Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon's death set in motion the fall of Anakin Skywalker to the dark side. 
Listening to Dave Filoni talk about this was something else. I've mentioned several times in previous videos about the fact that the Jedi of the Clone Wars era have lost their way, and since they were the controlling, force-wielding power in the galaxy, the Force was attempting to rebalance the galactic scale by giving rise to Sidious. The Force willed Maul to kill Qui-Gon so that in 13 years' time, Anakin would become Darth Vader and Darth Sidious's apprentice, Luke and Leia would be born, and the future would eventually see Anakin's return to the light side and balance being restored in the galaxy. I know some people love the prequels and some people hate them, but this is a perfect example as to why I love the prequels, regardless of any flaws they may have. One lightsaber duel from The Phantom Menace had such profound repercussions on galactic history and that's one of the things that I love about the prequels. Knowing that Dave Filoni worked very closely with George Lucas during his time working on The Clone Wars, I'm assuming that this was something he discussed with George Lucas. Hearing Filoni talk about the intricacies and nuances of Star Wars and lore was pretty great and I hope we get more of it as Galleries continues. But what do you guys think about Dave Filoni discussing the importance of Qui-Gon's death by the hands of Darth Maul? Check out some of our previous videos. Please like and subscribe and stay nerdy.